They get you in your home when no one else can. Locksmiths can really be a lifesaver when you're locked out of your house. But WMBF News has discovered you could let a felon into your house and not even know it. WMBF News reporter Brandon Herring live for us in the studio to show us how a gap in state law could let this happen. Brandon. Well, guys, in South Carolina, everyone from dentists to barbers and manicurists, accountants and real estate agents, they're all required to have a professional license even boxing ring announcers. Well, if they get into trouble, they could lose that license and their ability to continue working in that profession. But when it comes to a locksmith, someone you're expected to trust, there is no safeguard. I need to have it rekeyed. Maria Elias Williams says she's really pleased with the work a locksmith did for her last week. It took about an hour to change the locks and charged me what he said he was gonna charge me and it worked. She used a referral to find a reputable professional. That may seem like an obvious thing to do, but Fred Paxton with the South Carolina Locksmith Association says lots of people don't know anything about the locksmiths they call. And those customers trust locksmiths with locks and keys to just about anything. But these guys are proof not all locksmiths can be trusted. Joshua Berlin was convicted of lying to customers. Then there's Todd Morrison, convicted of murder and David Zimmer and Peter Sparakis, both convicted of separate sex crimes involving young girls. They were all locksmiths at the time of their crimes. The day he's paroled and the day he walks through that gate as a free man, he could go anywhere he wants to and become a locksmith that day. Assistant solicitor Candace Lively convicted Sparakis and now he's out of prison and back in North Myrtle Beach with a locksmith business still in his name. Whenever I learned that he was going to be going into people's homes potentially, I had a huge concern. She says he used his work as a way to control his victims, taking them on his jobs and showing them how he could unlock doors. Tell them don't lock your door, you know I can get in. You know, they've sat there and watched him get into cars and homes for themselves, so they knew that there was no way they could keep him out. So she's been hoping for a new law that would require locksmiths to get a professional license, one that could be revoked for violent criminals. Paxton says the Locksmith Association wants change too. That there's a background check, that there is a fingerprint card, and we want to make sure that there's nothing to tarnish the image of the locksmith industry in the state of South Carolina. Since 2006, representatives have introduced a locksmith licensing law three times. The first two never left committee. The other could also die this year if there's not enough support to bring it up again. Paxton believes that's likely because he says many of the state's lawmakers, including Governor Nikki Haley, oppose more business regulations. I respect that. I respect her decision and I thank her for that. However, this is not a burden on the small business. This is only registering us who are locksmiths. The state's Department of Labor, Licensing and Regulation doesn't want to take on oversight of locksmiths either. Fifteen other states, including North Carolina, already require licensing for locksmiths. Paxton vows to keep pushing for change. It doesn't need to be placed on the back burner. This is something that uh, the South Carolina Lock the Locksmith Association has been after for quite some time. So for now, it's up to you to find a reputable locksmith on your own. And there certainly are a lot of trustworthy options out there. But the best advice is also the hardest to follow. You have to decide now what locksmith you'll use if you ever need one. You should ask friends and family for suggestions so you don't just pick the first locksmith you find. Also, see if the locksmith belongs to any professional associations so you can check if he or she is in good standing with that association. And finally, while researching this story, I found locksmiths who use their own name in the name of their business or their advertising at least make it easier for you to check their backgrounds. Live in the studio, I'm Brandon Herring, WMBF News.